What's up guys, HBox here, and we're going to go over a quick rundown on everything to know about Nintendo's new console, which is aptly named the Nintendo Switch OLED model, in parentheses. Uh, it's unlike Nintendo to simply add a technical term to one of their console names as the official name of the console. So even there, they kind of dropped the ball. But there was rumors about a new Switch coming out this year, and this, of course, confirms it. There was a leak earlier this week, but a tweet today from Nintendo of America um, kind of makes that official. It says it brings the versatility of the Nintendo Switch experience, a vibrant 7-inch OLED screen, a wide adjustable stand, and more. It releases on October 8th with a retail price of $350. Now, everyone was wondering what this would include. Um, now, the biggest selling point being the fact that you go from a 7-inch, or I'm sorry, you go from a 6.2-inch regular screen to a 7-inch OLED screen. Uh, the adjustable stand, which used to be this flimsy little kickstand that came with earlier models that it would hold the switch up but any small force would knock it over now it's a wide stand goes across the entire console um you can adjust it too so if you have a larger party or a lot of people in there it's not just one sort of viewing angle fits all they're sort of taking the approach where you can now adjust it whichever way you want based upon how big a group is or maybe what makes your neck feel better so i actually like the fact that they fixed the um the kickstand that was on my earlier gripes with the original console a cool thing here also is that this that these uh Nintendo Switch OLED model includes a built-in wired LAN port. Big, big thing here because uh, me being the guy who enters more online Wi-Fi or online Ultimate tournaments than anyone else, um, having the requirement of a LAN adapter to play, you know, LAN Ultimate was always annoying. It's just an extra little added fee that everyone needs. But it looks now that, you know, if you buy this new version of the Switch, it has a built-in LAN port, no adapters required. It might, hopefully, maybe it's a it's a... A pipe dream, maybe it'll improve uh, the performance of connectivity, but probably not. I think that the LAN adapters and having this will probably perform it exactly the same, but it is just one a little bit more convenient, the fact that you don't need to bring out around a LAN adapter in order to play this. One thing to note is that Nintendo actually ditched the inside USB port on the Nintendo Switch for the new LAN port. Now, most people might think that's a good idea, um, which in practice it is by not needing an adapter. But when you consider that a lot of switches are used for tournaments, that's actually one less port for people to plug in their pro controllers into and one less port in general to, pro to plug in uh, peripherals and other things. So especially if you're someone who uses the uh, official Nintendo Switch Pro adapter for the game controllers that, and you want to use USB and rumble. If you want to use USB and rumble and you want to have speakers and you want to use your pro controller, you're going to have to give up at least one of those. So, um, actually very, not good thing. Uh, 64 gigabyte internal storage. It says the audio is enhanced. It doesn't really say much. Um, and three modes in one TV tabletop and handheld mode. Uh, Joy-Cons and the console itself uh, seems to come in a white color now. Everything else is essentially the same. The big, the big, big selling point of this entire console and the reason Nintendo wants you to buy it is because of that 7-inch OLED screen. I, myself, have to admit, I'm not sure I'm personally sold on buying this. Mainly because I'm a guy who plays this, uh, you know, console almost 99% of the time on my dock right, or, you know, on my monitor, I plug it into my dock, I play on my monitor, I stream it, and that's how I play Ultimate, on the go, maybe if I'm taking an airplane flight, maybe I'll play it there, but apart from that, the only difference I can see in buying this model, as someone who plays it with the dock mode almost exclusively, literally is just a built-in LAN adapter, which I don't need a built-in Ethernet plug, I already have that covered, so literally for someone like me, this actually makes no difference whatsoever i'm pretty sure the dock um is gonna still like even though it is a new dock like i don't think it's gonna have any difference at all in terms of plugging it into a capture card i don't think there's gonna be any quality change there um yeah it's just uh i don't know given, given all this time that nintendo had i think the, the switch came out in 2017 i believe three or four years ago and for this to be like the big big push that they made you know, the Nintendo Switch Lite, to me, was a way bigger, you know, um, it wasn't an upgrade, of course, but it was a way bigger alternative. It was a way bigger news because you, you, you lower the price by a good bit, still allowed you to play games on the go, um, made it cheaper to, you know, 
Upon making it cheaper, you let go of the dock option, but you still give a new experience to people who didn't want to have a console. They just wanted a new handheld, you know, something to bring around. They made it the same price as what the DS, the 3DS and the DS Lite were, so that was really, really good. Um, they're upping the price of this to 350 and I, I don't think it warrants it. They should have just re-released this um, the same price. They should have left it at 300 lower the price of the old console so people will still buy it as the option, have the, the uh, Switch Lite as the alternative, and still do that. But um, it's just... It leaves me wanting more. If they would have included 4K with this, if they would have included some sort of, of upgrades to the games and the graphics, I mean, that would have been so, so sick. I mean, I love OLED screens. They are very vibrant. They are, The blacks on there look amazing. The colors on there look amazing. Um, you know, for someone who used to get headaches when looking at small screens for a long time, this is a really good thing. And, of course, it reminds me of the time when they... Uh, took the DS, the Game Boy Advance, and they re-released it, either the Game Boy Advance SP or the DS Lite, made the screen a lot more bright. People love people love bright screens. That's in, in the in the era of smartphones, everyone loves bright screens. But for a console, I get that they merged the idea of a console and held it together, but you need to appeal to both audiences. They did only handheld upgrades, not really console upgrades, apart from the built-in Ethernet plug. Um, so I would have loved to see more console upgrades itself. And the other thing that people are going to find really annoying about this is that the biggest gripe the most people had with the original console was the Joy-Cons, with Joy-Con Drift. And the fact is, on the website, I'm telling you, they, if they had any upgrade to the Joy-Con apart from the color at all, they would have mentioned it. But they just said, this is the Joy-Con. The included Joy-Con controllers give you total gameplay flexibility. Not sure about that if my controller is drifting every five seconds. So, I mean... People are going to buy it, but Nintendo should have and could have done a lot more, I feel. Um, maybe they're focused a lot on the games. It looks like it comes in a white set and a neon red, neon blue set. So it looks like they're ditching the original gray color for this set. You can only buy it in white or the neon red and blue. But nothing else is, seems to be different. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Um... So, yeah, uh, fans, of course, were, were showing their disdain on Twitter, saying they were doing the, the bare minimum uh, just to, to have people there. It's a new screen. Um, and honestly, for 350 I I I don't think I'm buying this. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm buying this myself. Like, if... if, 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 if if I get it as a gift or something, sure, that's that's great, and I'll play it. I just, like, that's it. A better screen. A kickstand. Cool. I, you, you didn't really remark upon the things that we wanted, but when I'm thinking upon why Nintendo didn't fix the issues that we wanted them to fix, the 4K issue, that one I can understand. The FPS issue, I can understand too. I feel like that would involve revamping all the games that have already come out. But even still, even if they made a new console that supported 4K and supported, you know, a lot better frame rates, a lot of games, and all future games from here on out included that 4K ability and 60 FPS, that would have been really, really cool. Like, we're okay. We, I think the Nintendo general audience, whether it's casual, competitive, or whatever it might be, I think we accept the old games that we have as is. Like, I know ultimate is 1080p 60 fps i know that i know that animal crossing runs at like 30 fps but it still is for most people enjoyable like we if, if people still play the games they still consider them enjoyable it's not a deal breaker but having a new console with that capability for all future games would have been that much more exciting because it would have built up so much more hype would have been looking forward so much more to all future games that come out and that would have been it. It would have given, you know, even third-party developers a bigger chance to shine um, and a bigger chance to showcase what their talents are and how they can create games with that sort of new environment. Um, but the same Switch, same software, and if you're a huge handled person, I would, you know, probably go ahead and buy it and enjoy it. But if you're like me, I'm going to need a little more to, to justify a $350 purchase for literally everything that I already have right here with my day one purchase of my original Nintendo Switch. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, does having a 0.7 or 0.8 increase on a screen with all the capabilities justify it for you? 
are you going to buy in October, which is it's, it'll, it'll come out literally in almost exactly three months. Um, and uh, are you disappointed? Are you happy? Um, and let me remind you guys, Nintendo with console upgrades or releases, they don't exactly do this every week. The next big upgrade to a console to a Switch might not be for another couple of years. Maybe three years, honestly, if I'm being... If, if we're looking at this realistically. I think the 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 Switch Lite came out, came out, I think, two years after the original. And this one now is being announced around two years after the Switch Lite. Uh, editors will probably double-check for me and let me know if I'm right, I'm right or wrong. Um, so, yeah. Give or take two years before we can have any other semblance or any other chance of a 4K console or one with uh, really improved performance. So, yeah. This is the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Surprising, a little disappointing. And I want everyone to note that the trailer that they have recorded for this console is in 25 FPS. <laughs> I, I, think, I think they're pretty afraid of this whole, uh, a, this whole HD concept, huh? 